Custer is perhaps the oldest town in the Black Hills. Of course, it's named after General Custer. It's small and touristy, but more authentic than its more famous brother, Deadwood. No gambling allowed here, though. A monument commemorates the discovery of gold here, and every year in July, the town celebrates Gold Discovery Days. Out for a morning stroll here at the Custer Skywalk. You can see they've got George Custer there on one side, as well as Native American there on the other side. Just a short walk to an overlook of the city of Custer. Okay, I made it to the top. It's not long, it's about 0.4 miles one way, but it is steep. There's a lot of stairs, a lot of climbing to get here, but have a beautiful view of Custer, South Dakota from the very top. For food, try broasted chicken takeout for the crispiest chicken you'll ever taste. And okay, we've got a good looking plate there. Now you butter. haven't tried it yet. Not yet. Cooper has them. What do you rate it? Five stars. Five. 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 Or the Baker's Bakery and Cafe where they promise that you'll love their buns. I'm not making this up. You can also try the Pounding Fathers restaurant where they serve burgers and beer. See what they did there? Pounding Fathers. I recommend staying in Custer as it is a great jumping off point to see the Black Hills. And there's no better way to see them than in an open top. We're renting a slingshot from Adventure Rental Center. It's going to be a great way to do the needles, iron rods, anything like that. Charger up here. Go ahead and put your key back in. The heart of the Black Hills isn't Mount Rushmore, it's Custer State Park. This state park rivals any national park in terms of scenic drives, hiking, and wildlife. The laconic president, Calvin Coolidge, once stayed in the State Game Lodge for the summer, which came to be called the Summer White House. While visiting, Coolidge actually promised that the government would pay for Mount Rushmore and the project began during his presidency. Coolidge, by the way, was known for rarely talking. The old joke goes that someone approached him and said, Mr. President, my friend bet me that I couldn't get you to say three words. He replied, you lose. There are three scenic drives in Custer State Park. They're all different and special. Wildlife Loop is an 18 mile road that always seems to deliver. As you can see, we're in the prairie here. Prairie Dog Town is full of barking little ground squirrels. The big game get all the attention, but it's these little guys that often do the dirty work for the ecosystem to support the big guys. The wild burrows are our favorite. Like the mountain goats, they aren't native, but were left behind by miners and now wander wild. Although, as you can see, they aren't all that wild. Hi, pal. You want a banana? Oh, whoa, you hit the mother load, bud. <laughs> Look at those bananas. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, 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 wow. With over 1,300 bison roaming the park, bison jams are common. A few years ago, we seemingly ran into the entire herd at dusk. Got a little itch going on. Can't sit too well. This guy's scratching himself on that sign. This was one of my most treasured bison sightings, and I've seen many over the years. There's a reason the bikers gathered at nearby Sturgis every August. There's no better place to ride than on the winding scenic roads in the Black Hills. The Needles Highway winds through granite formations jutting out of the ground. 
The initial idea for Mount Rushmore was actually to carve faces of Western legends like Buffalo Bill, Annie Oakley, and Sitting Bull on the tops of the needles, but it was too impractical and not national enough in scope. Stop at some of the overlooks and you might get lucky and run into mountain goats. Six of these cute guys came from Canada about a hundred years ago and were placed in a zoo nearby. The first night, they escaped from the zoo and they've been wandering the Black Hills ever since. Here at the Needles Highway, Custer State Park, South Dakota. This tunnel is for one car only, it's crazy. Drive through there, come out to this incredible little stop where there's all these needles. That's what they call the Needles Highway. All these little spires poking up. There's a little overlook over there. It's quite a nice stop and gathering spot here, plus the little ones, including their dads, like me, can climb up among these rocks here and get up to some overlooks. Amazing road. At the end of the Needles Highway is the famous Sylvan Lake. This was one of the locations in the movie National Treasure. The movie portrayed it being directly behind Mount Rushmore, but it's actually a few miles away. A walking path leads around the lake. The path instantly transforms from low-def video from 2009 to high-def 2021. I think I liked myself better on low-def. This little lake is created by this little dam. With the exception of one steep little hill, the walk is flat and short. Anyone can do it. You'll probably spend more time stopping to smell the flowers than you will walking. Feel free to climb on the rocks for memorable overlooks. Visit the general store to rent kayaks and canoes. Pick up your life jacket at the shed and you're off. Yep, I want low def 2009 back. An hour is all you need to paddle around the crown jewel of Custer State Park. Restless kids, let them swim in the little alcove. The store and the lodge and all that are over there. And my daughter has gotten me to climb a bunch of these rocks. So you could just climb all over, scramble all over these rocks. There's some people like way out there on the peak. Um, so we've got this pretty cool little area where we can just overlook everybody playing in the water and, and all that. There's big, or there's a beach swimming area right down there. It's real popular with some picnic tables and stuff. Uh, Sylvan Lake. Sylvan Lake is also the jumping off point for Black Elk Peak. At over 7,200 feet, it's the highest point east of the Rocky Mountains and a popular hiking destination. There are many routes you can take to the top. The hike is about seven miles round trip depending on which route you take. The hike has wildflowers, meadows, and rock formations to admire along the way. Black Elk Peak used to be named Harney Peak, but the name was changed in 2016 to honor the Lakota medicine man Black Elk. Cheryl and I brought our two oldest sons with us as hiking companions. 
This is the joy of having older kids. I'm enjoying every minute of it. As you've seen, we visited here with them when they were little tykes. Then we blinked and they became teenagers. The time goes fast. At the top is a fire lookout tower. This was built in the 1930s by the Depression Era Civilian Conservation Corps. Interestingly, it also operated as a U.S. post office for about seven years, one of the highest post offices in the United States. Black Elk Peak provides gorgeous panoramic views of the Black Hills. When I blinked, I also got out of shape. The trip back down is much easier. That is, if it doesn't rain and hail on you like it did us. All right, we're in a major rain and hail storm. Just testing our resolve here on my theory to always bring your own weather. Oh. I think the worst is over. Hey, the hell is gone. I mean, I have made some pretty bad moves on this trip and, they'll, okay. and they'll all be more memorable. Remember the time we hiked with rain in the forecast? This guy's wrong. Ow. I was wrong, it got worse. And they're this big. <laughs> this reminded me of our honeymoon in San Francisco 20 years ago when it rained on us in the redwoods. So we recreated the moment. For many people, this is their first view of Mount Rushmore. But the better way to approach the memorial is to drive the 17 mile Iron Mountain Road. We've covered the wildlife loop and the Needles Highway. Iron Mountain Road is the third scenic drive in Custer State Park and connects the park to Mount Rushmore. The construction of Iron Mountain and the Needles was overseen by Peter Norbeck, the South Dakota governor and senator who did so much to make Mount Rushmore a reality. Together, these roads are called the Peter Norbeck Scenic Byway. Norbeck combined engineering and art to show off the best of the Black Hills. The drive is an experience in and of itself. Norbeck said that they were meant to be driven at 20 miles per hour so you can appreciate the scenery. So even if you can't get a slingshot to do it, at least take your time and enjoy the ride. The Iron Mountain Road begins on the valley floor before winding through the forest. The pigtail bridges are famous and fun to drive. So too are the three one-lane tunnels, if you can fit through them. They're about 11 feet by 11 feet, but check the Custer State Park website for exact dimensions of each tunnel if you have an RV. The tunnels also frame Mount Rushmore in the distance. The final tunnel is named after Doan Robinson and provides the best Mount Rushmore views. Pull off at the overlook to let the kids get their wiggles out and see Mount Rushmore in its context. 